Let's begin by explaining what I'm going to show you by way of a bit of a diagram here. So there is an edit share server, which is what I'm, I'm running a VM. And there is a host running P5. So P5 runs on Mac, Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, Synology, QNAP, various different places that you can run P5. So um, the P5 server has P5 installed and configured with an archive workflow using the P5 archive module. And the archive workflow will basically receive data from some source. In this case, it will be the edit share machine. And then it will send the archive data to either cloud at the top there, LTFS tapes, which can be either ordinary LTO tapes or LTFS tapes, or some kind of uh, disk-based storage. So P5 Archive is flexible. It can be configured with various different cloud vendors or tape libraries or drives or any kind of disk storage. Um, and then in order to be able to archive from the edit share machine over here, we need to install P5 as a client. So it's the P5 software gets installed onto the edit share uh, operating system directly. And then the P5 server over here is hooked up to be able to read and write data to the edit share storage via a, uh, an IP connection that we set up between the two. So that's what we're going to be doing. So in this video, we'll be first of all installing P5, setting up this connection, and then we'll be using the Flow Story software to uh, specify specific assets within this uh, DAM to be written to the archive storage. So we'll select an asset, we'll get it written into the archive, and then we'll recover that particular asset back from the archive again. And that will be happening uh, via this connection between the P5 server and the edit share server. So let's take a look at how this actually all fits together. We're going to run through installing P5 client on the edit share server host and also how to set up edit share flow so that we can do archiving to that P5 archive server and shift data either onto cloud storage, LTO tape or, or disk storage. So to begin with, we need to install uh, P5 on this edit share host that you can see here that I have running as a VM. So I want to use my terminal uh, window here to get an SSH session to the edit share machine. So I need to know the edit share, edit share machine's uh, network address to do that. So if I just log in, I'll be able to see the IP of the primary interface, which is 192.168.227.194. So armed with that, uh, I can SSH to the edit share user on that host. I'll just put the password in. OK, and now we are in the home directory, home edit share. So the next thing I need to do is download um, a Debian P5 installer package. Now I can download files in the shell using the, uh, the wget command, which I can provide with a, a URL for that Debian package, but I need to get that URL. So let me bring up a browser. Now I am on the archiware.com site here and I've navigated to the download page. And if I scroll down a little way, you'll see that the current version is 704. That might be a bit different by the time you watch this, but you need to look for the Linux Debian package and click on the new install button to download it. Now this is gonna download via this Chrome browser on my Mac, but I actually wanna download the package directly onto the edit share host. So if I right click on this link here, download link and copy the link address, I can go back to my terminal, paste that link address in, and that will download the Debian package directly down onto the home directory on the edit share host. So we'll just let that finish downloading. And if I do an ls, we can see that package sitting there. And the, um, the Debian command for installing a package is d package minus i to install it uh, and the name of the package which is awpst704.deb. And I need to run this as root. So I'm going to put sudo in front and I'm going to copy and paste the necessary password for the root user. And then the package installer will unpack 
and install and start the P5 application, but the default port, so that the P5 listens on a TCP IP port, which is 8000 by default, uh, that port will clash with other ports that EditShare uses. So we'll need to manually change that port to be a different one. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment once it's started up. And we do that by renaming a configuration file to reflect the different port that we want EditShare to use. So, as predicted, the startup of P5 will fail with an error. Uh, not particularly helpful error, but an error all the same. So what we need to do now is stop P5, change that port configuration, and start it back up again. So P5 is uh, installed in the user local aw directory so these are the files that comprise the p5 application and i'm going to run sudo stop server to stop the running instance of p5 then i need to change direction into the config directory where there is a file called lexserve.8000 the 8000 in that file name indicates the port that we are starting up on that isn't working so i simply need to rename that file via the move command from lexserve.8000 to lexserve8567. So this is a port that I've found will work. Neither 8000 nor 8500 will work. I've seen some documentation where it's 8500. That doesn't work. So I'm choosing 8567. Uh, ah, I didn't put the sudo in front of that, so it failed because of permissions. So now if I look, I'll be able to see that file name has changed. I'll go back to the previous directory and I'll start P5 back up via the start server command that you see there. Again, uh, prepending that with sudo, so it's running as the, uh, the root user. So now P5 should start up without any errors, and we can move on to configuring our P5 server, which is a separate host to the machine where EditShare is running, to uh, use this P5 client, so EditShare, the EditShare host is acting as a P5 client, which will be the source of data that's being archived, and that will get pushed across to the P5 server, which I'm going to run on a different host. Now let's switch to another tab in my browser here, and I've got a P5 server running on this 227.118 IP, and if I point my browser at port 8000, then I can get to Arcuware's login page, where I can then log in with the default credentials in this case, which are admin and admin. So this is P5 running on a, a different host to the EditShare host, uh, which is publishing its web U UI on TCP IP port 8000. Now, if I open up another tab, we can test that the, um, that the EditShare P5 installation is responding on that port 8567. Uh, by putting in a URL as follows. So I'm using HTTP plus the IP address of the edit share with port 8567 and then slash login on the end. And when I hit return, we will get the login page for the P5 running on edit share. So this is the user interface for P5 running on the edit share machine. Uh, now we don't need to do any configuration with this installation of P5. Uh, but the, the credentials that are stored within P5 itself well, on a fresh installation are admin and admin. So if we enter those, then we can get to the UI, but because there are no license keys installed, most of the U user interface here is disabled. Uh, one thing we can do, though, is change the password. So if I wanted to uh, change the password from admin, the, the default password, to something more secure, I could do that in there via that web interface, and that would be pretty much all we needed to do in there. So I'm flicking back now to the tab for my P5 server, where I already did some configuration. I already set up um, an archive workflow so that we have some target to archive to from edit share and from flow. So um, in order to hook up my P5 server so that it can archive data from the edit share host, I need to go into the archive tab at the top. I need to go into clients on the left hand side. Uh, you'll see localhost already listed here, which is the local machine where P5 is running as a server. But I need to add that other host, which is the edit share machine. So all I do here is provide a name. 
so let's call it edit share uh, flow and then we will put in the IP address which is 192.168.227.194 and uh, the, the HTTP port which is no longer uh, 8000 it's 84567 and then the default username and password so if we had changed the password to something different than admin we would put that password in here and then I hit the apply button it spins for a moment and if it comes back like that without any warnings then it means that the P5 server has been able to connect to the P5 client so we can close this window and then we'll see our edit share flow uh, sitting there in our client list in P5 and if we want we could hit the ping button over here to uh, just test that network connection is working fine so we can see that it is and one other thing you can do you can go into manual archiving and you'll see the edit share flow sitting here and if you click on it you'll get the root file system listing in here as well so you can be sure that we are able to transmit uh, data from that edit share host so with that done um, we can flick back to the edit share software to do some setup there so I'm opening a new tab in my browser I've navigated just to the IP of the edit share server which pulls up this uh, menu of uh, other configuration sites that you can go to the one that we need to go into next to configure uh, the ArcuWare P5 server as a, a target for archiving in Flow is the Flow control here. So uh, let's click in on the login button and from here I'll log in. Okay and when this loads we need to visit the storage icon down the left hand side and we need to go to the manage tab at the top and add a new storage location by clicking the add button at the bottom and in here we're going to fill out the details of the P5 uh, server that is going to be doing the archiving for us so we'll give it a name so let's call it P5 archive as the location the type is going to be ArcuWare and then we need to fill in details about the host so the IP address of this host is 227.118 uh, so this is the machine that is not the edit share machine. Uh, the username and password I didn't change. The archive plan ID I happen to know is 10001. You can look that up in uh, in the ArcuWare UI. And edit share flow was the name that I gave to the uh, client that we added to P5, which is the edit share machine. So we add that in, and then there is a test button here that will allow us to confirm that the edit share server can speak or talk over the network to the P5 server and it says it's online and available so that's good so that's the uh, the storage location set up so we'll now be able to use that storage location to push assets to from within the flow application itself so in this window I have the Flow Story application running on my Mac and uh, connected up to my Edit Share server. I'm in a particular project here called Beach Edit and I have a number of assets including this one here which um, you can see has got some car footage in it and if I look at the, uh, the, the media location it's stored on my share called Demo MTL. So what I'm going to do now is put this in my P5 archive, which is going to put the um, the the put this file onto a tape. So there'll then be two uh, media locations. They'll it'll both be on the the SMB share called Demo MTL, and it'll also be in the ArcuWare archive location. So to do that, I can simply uh, right click on this asset under the media menu, choose archive. Uh, and then as for my destination, I will choose that P5 archive location that we just created and I'll hit the start button. Uh, on the left hand side here, uh, Flow tells me that an archive job has been requested. I can click up on the project up here under tasks to see that this is a pending job. And now you can see the job is completed. I get notification uh, down on the bottom that it's completed. So let's click OK there. And then if we look at this asset again, you'll see now under remote media, 
We have two different locations for the asset, so it's both on a file system and in the archive. The storage location for this asset that you can see here actually includes the uh, this P00245 number, which is the barcode from the tape. So when using a tape library, this will allow you to identify which tape it is that you need to recover this asset. And uh, P5 can write tapes in either the open LTFS format or its own native LTO tape format. Uh, let's delete this archive, uh, this asset rather, from the file system. So if I go into the, I'm um, already in the advanced mode, so I'm going to remove it from the SMB share location. And that should result in a refresh. And then we, you can see we can no longer see that asset listed here because we're actually browsing demo MTL. Uh, that storage location. If we go browse in our P5 archive location, we can see that asset now with a single location. And if I right click, I can perform a restore via the media menu of the whole clip. So here you see that this asset is currently in the location called P5 archive. Um, I think it's going to restore back to the original demo MTL share. I'll click start. Again, a restore job has been requested. Uh, we can monitor that job up here again, where we see tasks, it's pending. So this is a job which has now been deferred over to that P5 archive server, which will be uh, loading the necessary tape in the tape library and bringing the asset back online. So again, you see the uh, task is completed. You now see the metadata is updated to indicate that this is back in the demo MTL share. And if we go back to that share, there's our asset recovered from tape. OK, so that was just a quick tour, really, of how to get P5 up and running on your edit share server. Um, I didn't go through the details of how to configure Arcuware P5 because videos that cover that are available via Arcuware's um, support section on their website and manuals and tutorials etc but that's the flow configuration the edit share and flow configuration necessary to get this workflow up and running thanks for watching